Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. So anyhow, before I get started, I'm going to let her get started. This is Sharon. This is my better half. The light is, me. is it really? <laughs> now, now you know what I see. What happens to me every time I look at your beauty? Oh. I get blinded. Wow. <laughs> I have, I didn't put my glasses on this morning because I told Marcus I can either look pretty or see, because my makeup. In this heat, when I put my glasses on, for some reason, it just goes on my glasses. And then it's just so frustrating. So just if you wanted to know some of the problems that I have. Anyway, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so glad to see all your beautiful faces, people I've missed so, so much. And I told Rebecca, the worship this morning was probably the best I've ever heard in this church. Everything's been great. But this morning was so special to me. And so I have so much that I can share with you. So can I share two things? Sure. <laughs> I don't want to take up his time because I know he has something really good for you guys. But I was reminded when Charlene was talking about um, this morning about bringing your offering. And I was thinking Rebecca was calling people to the altar with your offering, right? And sometimes we just, we're so flippant about it and about giving and about sharing but my life changed, really, and it keeps changing when the, Lord when, when the Word of God challenges me. And I've just turned into someone like, and Marcus can attest to this, like if I'm a wife, I'm going to be the best wife that ever walked on this earth. If I'm going to make you a meal, I'm going to make you the best. It might suck, but I'm going to do, do the best that I can. Do you know why? That what I've realized? I only do it for the Lord. He is my source. He is my provider. He proves it over and over. So if I'm going to give, you better believe it. And I'll give everything. So I have to like be in line. Do you know what I mean? Like I have to use wisdom too. But in December, I was in a place where I was like, Lord, you got to show me what you want me to do. Because I have a big capacity. Do I get a job? Do I serve Marcus? Do I travel? Do I do my own thing? What is it that you want me to do? And so I just put this challenge to the Lord. I said, if, if I'm supposed to stay in ministry, work in ministry, do ministry as my thing, then you're going to have to send me a paycheck <laughs> with my name on it. And I told the Lord that. I said, send me a paycheck with my name on it. Two days later, Marcus comes in the house. He opens the envelope. He's like, this has never happened before. There was an official check. It wasn't even handwritten. You know, some churches print out checks, and it had a printed name, just like a paycheck. And it was a good amount of money, and it was in my name. <laughs> so I want to challenge you. What you asked for this morning before I asked God for that check, it was already in the mail. Isn't that good? God will never do you short. He'll never do you short. So whatever is mine is actually his. My husband is his. How I treat him, he is my first ministry. Believe me, I had to learn that. I had to learn that. Do you know why? Do you know why I had to learn that? Because people talk about submission as being you're weak. If you submit, you're weak. Really? Have you tried it? Have you tried it when you don't agree? Don't tell me that's weak, honey. That's strength. That's the power of the Holy Spirit, right? So then the other thing I wanted to quickly share with you is my favorite scripture that the Lord's been showing to me over and over again in the last month, and it's from Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. And this will help you. They sang a new song saying, Worthy are you, talking about the Lamb, Jesus, worthy are you to take the scroll <laughs> and to open the seal for, now this is, the, this is the thing, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people, for God from every tribe, language, and people, and nation. Ransom means he paid, he paid a price when someone was, you pay or she's dead. 
Crime shows are my favorite. I can show you. You pay or she's dead. And the father said, I will pay. I will pay with the blood of my son because I will not let her die at your hand. So, so the blood of Je- so my sin didn't just disappear when Jesus died. My sin was judged. He judged it. So don't come and tell me that God's going to judge me. Jesus was judged. His blood speaks for me. So now when poverty comes, speak to the blood, baby. When sickness comes, speak to the blood, baby. You want to take my marriage? Speak to the blood. Because you are not going to take what Jesus prayed a heavy price for me to have. Or for you. For you, I will fight not on my watch. Amen. Take what is yours. Now, Marcus, we'll have a wonderful word for you. <laughs> that was the introduction. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. That's why women should be silent in church right there. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was a good word. Did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. You know the men get to heaven a half an hour before the women, right? Yeah, because uh, it's quiet in heaven for a half an hour. Sorry. Moving right along. I just I feel that some of the uh, some of uh, uh, half the audience is offended, and uh, and you have to forgive me because I just got back from Kenya. And, uh, you know, I'm a little bit jet lagged still. I am not on my regular sleeping pattern yet. So uh, I woke up at 4 a.m. in the morning again, wide awake, got up, ran to Waffle House, set the alarm off in the house, woke everybody up, thought I made it out the door. It beeped. That's all it did. All I heard was the beep, 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 beep. I made it. Well, apparently when I left, it went off majorly. Steve came out in full SWAT gear with his night vision on. And his AK-47 and stuff, searching room to room. And I was long gone, eating my uh, scattered, double-covered, smothered, dice-capped hash browns. So, but I'm going to get back on American time real soon. Amen. I told Sharon when I came back in, I need, I need grease, I need cheese, and I need, uh, I need something with fat in it. I need something, one word describes all that, I need something carbolicious. Amen. So, so that's so that's what we did. But anyhow, I went to Kenya. Uh, for those of you that uh, uh, stay uh, plugged in what we're doing, I uh, went to Kenya to go on what they're doing. Uh, they're doing crusades over there, and I went with Eric Smith. And Eric Smith uh, does these crusades. He's done them for R. W. Shambach years ago, and uh, he did them for my pastor. And when my pastor passed away in uh, October of last year. He had uh, led uh, over eight million, uh, over eight million decisions for Christ, and raised up one hundred and forty-four thousand pastors and evangelists worldwide. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go on. I wanted to go on one. I hadn't went on one. He said, which one do you want to go on? And I went and I decided to go on this Kenya one. During that week, we saw forty-two thousand decisions for Christ. Uh, saw a crowd of uh, the last night of over thirty thousand people showing up. It was amazing. He facilitates these events. I think we're going to end up doing about two to three of them a year. We're going to start doing that because we got a call of God on our life to do that. And, you know, we're just coming back, getting our getting, getting my bearings and decided what we're going to do going forward. I mean, he talked about the first time he uh, uh, did one for R.W. Schambach in a communist country, and they had a woman minister. They were trying to get her to denounce Christ. The communists were. And they said, you you will denounce Christ, right? Horrible Russian accent, by the way. And they said, and she wouldn't. So they took her first finger on her hand and they cut it off. She wouldn't denounce Christ. And they said, you're going to lose your other finger. She wouldn't, do, she wouldn't denounce Christ. She lost her other finger until they removed four fingers on one of her hands and all she had was a thumb. And she came to the Miracle Crusade and R.W. Schambach was there. And said, I believe that God's going to create, release a creative miracle on you. And went down there and laid hands on her and prayed for her during the crusade. Uh, during that meeting that night, she went home. Nothing happened that night. Uh, uh, happened at the crusade. She returned the very next day, and she had four brand new fingers on her hands. And we're talking about 
pu- pu- uh, pupils swirling where people didn't have any blind. They had no eyeballs, no uh, creative miracles, and all that is going on. And then you end up seeing the Crusades, and you're like, oh, my Lord, I can do this. I mean, it's God's power and God's glory, but can God can God bring revival without you? No, he can't. No, he cannot. He cannot. There is no such thing as a divine move from God that's going to fall on people without you. And it's wrong. And that's why you're in your prayer closet praying for a move of God, and you're asking God to do what God told you to do. you got to preach the gospel. And even on the day of Pentecost, Jesus spoke words and told them to go to the upper room, and they were waiting. Without those words being spoken, the Holy Ghost wouldn't have came. But what we do many times, we often, we often, what we do, T.L. Osborne said this, we waste two things in our prayer life. Two times we waste in prayer. Asking God to do what he's already done and asking God to do what we're supposed to do. Prayer has its place, but if all you do is pray for revival and you never take action, you're a one-legged man. If all you do is take action and you never pray, then you're a one-legged man. You need to pray and take action, pray and take action. And what's happening, we got people that are waiting for the glory of God to fall down like the pool of Bethesda, and they're not doing anything, and they're not preaching the Bible. Paul said that in Romans chapter 10, how can they get saved unless they hear? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, what about these Muslims in uh, countries that are having dreams about Jesus? Well, somebody's praying and God is God is activating, God is able to move through those prayers. But even when Cornelius came to the Lord and the Gentiles were opened up, the, the, the angel appeared and said, go get Peter, and Peter will tell you. The angel could have told him the gospel, but he said, you go get, you go get Peter. Because angels have not been commissioned to preach the gospel. We have. So, and, and, and what I'm doing is I'm, getting, I'm seeing the simplicity of it. But what I was so amazed about, what I was so amazed about was the simplicity of the message. They just got up there and preached Jesus. And when it comes to the loss, you don't have to say, hello, let me give you my best doctrine on penal substitution. Some of you are like, what are you talking about? Let's talk about the doctrine of, tr- of the Trinity. These people are lost. All we got to do is preach Jesus. But I'm excited about it because, you know, what I'm doing is, I, I don't know about you, but that, that tends to be my, my, my default is I, I end up becoming too passive. I know some of you think you're passive. Well, I do. I, I kick back and I become too passive is what I do. And sometimes we got to take action. You're praying and you're praying and you're praying, and sometimes you just got to get off your rear end and take your best guess. Start moving. And I'm not saying you're not doing anything. I'm just saying I was like, this is what the Lord is uh, praying to me. I mean, T.L. Osborne, just, he just kept on preaching it over and over again. We've been listening to some T.L. Osborne getting, you know, jacked up on him before we went, before I went. And uh, 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 it was just amazing. He's just talking about how God is going to use you. Amen. And God, it is a partnership. It's not all God. It's not all you. It's you and God together. And if we'll do our part, God will do his part. So we got there and 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 I got there and, and saw the simplicity of it and I'm excited about it. And forgive me if I seem a little, you know, out there because I, because I'm still a little bit jet lagged. I don't even know what time it is. What time is it right now? I should be in bed or should I be awake? But what I want to do is I want to talk to you a little bit today about. I want to talk to you today about um, about what the Lord has spoken to me about uh, about what's going on here at the sanctuary. And I, I I really said, you know, Lord, is there something prophetically you want me to say? Because sometimes. The Lord says, sometimes you'll operate in the mantle of a teacher, and I want you to go up there, and I want you to teach the Word of God. When that's on you, you, you go with it. Sometimes you'll operate in the mantle. You, you'll, you'll operate in your prophetic gift, and, 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 and that's what I want you to do, and you go with that. And then sometimes you'll do a combination of both. 
So I don't know where we're going today, but I believe that today is going to be more prophetic than teaching. Amen. And what I saw was I saw a battery, and I saw the bat, and I saw the battery, uh, like one of those triple uh, A batteries, you know, or double A's. And I saw the positive, and I saw the negative, and I and I saw by the Spirit of God, and I want you to hear out everything. I, here's what we're going to do. We're not going to react to what I'm saying right away. We're going to let me say it all at once, okay? So it's not going to be a bad thing. It's going to be a good thing. But I saw that the charge of the battery was beginning to go from positive to negative. It was going from positive to negative. It was going from a positive charge to a negative charge. And the Lord is saying right now during this season that you're going to have to guard your heart, you're going to have to guard your mouth because there is a temptation to go negative, to go po- go from positive to negative. And I said, Lord, okay, so what are you talking about here, God? Why? He because, because of some setbacks and because of some delays. Because of some setbacks and because of some delays, there is... Uh, a, a thing it has it hadn't went negative yet but there's a temptation to go that way and the lord is saying right now in the name of jesus in order to stop that from going negative and going back positive you're going to have to fan the gift that is on the inside of you you're going to have to do spiritual warfare and what i mean by spiritual warfare is you're going to have to rejoice in the lord you're going to have to guard your heart you're going to have to guard your mouth and you're going to have to unloose radical praise and worship during this time and you're gonna have to you're gonna have to get happy, and you're gonna have to contend with it. I really see that the enemy is trying to push you, push some people that way, and and, and God is just. This is not a warning. This is not an automatic thing. This is not a rebuke. God has said, "I want it to go the other way." He goes, and I, I want you to to receive what the Lord is saying uh, is saying to you. And you're gonna have to rejoice in the Lord, and you're gonna have to praise the Lord, and stop looking at the weather, and stop looking at delays, and stop looking at what what should have happened, what could have happened, what would have happened, or whatever else is going on in your life. There's all there's all kinds of things that happen in our life, and begin to deliberately, intentionally. Praise the Lord, grab a hold of our emotions, and fight the fight of faith until we see it coming. Until we have received what God has told us to do. Now, this is not a rebuke on leadership or anything like that. You know, I've had some things that are delayed, and the Lord told me that. You know, the Lord spoke the same thing to me. He said, hey, the last three things I told you to do. I said, yes, Lord. I thought, you know, he's going to give me an AMR report card. The Lord did not give me an AMR report card. He said, the last three things I told you to do, you drug your feet on. How about if you pick up the, I like to do things a little bit faster. Can you can you pick up the pace? Hello, Lord. I'm built for comfort. I'm not built for speed. I love comfort food, and I love pleasure. Hallelujah. But anyhow, what I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is this. There there are times that, you know, God will say that to, 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 to get us to pick up. It says in Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen? We don't want to be, me. you know, it's kind of like a, a car that's went up the hill, right? I saw this during praise and worship. I saw a car going up the hill, and it went up the hill real fast and got two-thirds of the way up, and then it just, it didn't slide backwards. It just stopped. And what it was was it got there fast, but you have to shift gears down to a lower gear to get more power, you can't go. You can't go as fast on the next leg as you did. You need power. You got where you're at with speed, but now it's gonna. You're gonna have to power through. You're gonna ha- and you're gonna power through by the spirit of God. You're gonna power through by worshiping God and keep on focusing on what God has said. I think there's some, there's some things that we need to realize in the midst of this. Are you guys understanding what I'm saying? Are you just listening? Amen. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 2, and I want to talk about a couple points. Habakkuk or, uh, chapter 2, what we got to do. And we all got to do this. You know, when, it, when God talked to Joshua about entering into the promised land, he said, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. And we always focus on fear. 
But, you know, the bottom line is this. You're here. And I know these people, and I know the people that are hanging around these people, the Cunninghams. Fear is not an issue. But you know what can become an issue? Discouragement. How do you manage your setbacks? How do you manage when things are not going according to the plan? When there's a delay? A delay is not a denial. But what will happen many times is the enemy will put pressure on you because of maybe something you said, maybe something you did, because, you know, the enemy, whether you like it or not, and I'm not trying to glorify the devil, he's got a report card on you. Amen? And we know we got some football fans in here, right? Ohio State Buckeyes, come on. Glory to God. Where you at? No? Okay, the other team, that other OSU. Yes. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is, you watch your team play, and then an opposing team plays you, and what will they do? They will run the same play until your team learns how to stop it. And some of you, there's two or three plays that the devil keeps on running on you, and he's going to keep on running the same play over and over again until you learn how to stop him. He brings the same type of person. The same person over and over and over again in your life. Or it might, it might not even be the same type of person. It might be the same person over and over again. And they act up and they set you off and you get in the flesh and you check out for two or three weeks. Or maybe something else, a financial attack or whatever else it is. And what do you do? You got to learn how to stop the run. You got to learn how to stop the pass. You got to learn how to play defense as well as offense. And the enemy is going to run the same play over and over and over and over and over and over and over again until you learn how to stop that play. And what we got to do is we want to go forward. This is a good group of people. You want to go forward. Amen. You don't want to plateau. I don't want to plateau. And God is saying, let's come up higher. And one of the things that we can do. When we have discouragement, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables, that he, uh, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak, it shall not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it shall surely come to pass. It will not tarry. The first thing that we need to do before we get into the fog of war, before we get into the heat of the battle, is we need to write the vision down and make it plain, which I believe you have done. And we need to go back when we're being opposed by the enemy and go back and remember what God had told us to do. Or otherwise, what we'll end up doing, the enemy will push you into the good things instead of the God things, and you're off assignment. And when you get off of assignment, you're out of your anointing, and you're frustrated. And you're like, oh, my Lord, where's my finances? Well, your finances are over here, and you're over here doing this. And God didn't tell you to do this. You're supposed to be over here. And how many times? And it's so subtle. The enemy does it to all of us, right? And I'm not saying he's – but what we got to do is sometimes we got to – it's like you drive your car, right? Right? Everybody drive your car and the potholes everywhere. You have to get your car aligned from time to time because it gets out of alignment and pulls to the right or to, pulls to the left. Sometimes we need a spiritual alignment. Right? And what the standard is, is what is the vision? What has God told me to do? Amen? And, I'm, and we are entering into another phase, even on our ministry also, where... Now, we were like begging for ministry. God give us any opportunity, and now we have multiple opportunities. And now I'm sitting there saying, okay, hold up, pump the brakes. What has God told us to do? Because in the end, what matters, the only thing that's going to matter in the end is did we do what God told us to do? And not what people think we should do. Or otherwise, what you'll do is you'll actually, you'll actually step out of your anointing. You'll frustrate yourself. You'll be out of place. You'll be on the right bus but in the wrong seat. Amen? 
and everybody knows it because you know what? You are, you, not only are you frustrated, but everybody around you is frustrated. You're wearing people out because you're not operating in grace anymore. Right? And there's a lot of things that we can do and uh, but that we don't need to be doing. But what we got to do is, is when we're, we're fighting the fight of faith, it's like this. God has told me to do this. Paul was called to be an apostle to the Gentiles. And every time he went to the Jews, he got persecuted and stoned. You know what I'm saying? Hello? That would be a good sign not to go preach to Jewish people. Let Peter have them. Right? But what I'm trying to say is, again, what has God told me to do? Am I on assignment? Because if I'm going to be attacked, I want to make sure I'm in the right place at the right time and on target. I don't want to question whether, uh, you know, and I need to establish that before. You cannot run where there is not a clear uh, a clear path. And in order to run, you have to have a clear, well-defined vision. So we write the vision. We need to go back and write, God, I don't care what's going on. I don't care what I'm experiencing. This is what you told me to do. You brought me here. Uh, starting a church in Oklahoma City, remind them, Cunningham's, it wasn't my idea. I was eating pizza and JJ's. And I was perfectly content, and you're the one that sat Marcus down beside me and said, Steve, you're called to be a pastor. You slow, stiff-necked, disobedient thing, you. Hallelujah. Move it right along. I'm just kidding. Uh, yes, yes. But anyhow, he did not want At that time, he was like, eh, nope. Okay. But what I'm trying to say is I'm having fun at Steve's expense, but he'll, he'll get the mic last. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is, it, 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 we got to do, am I on assignment? Am I doing what God told me to do? Am I responding to pressure? Some of you all, your peripheral issues would take care of themselves if you would just get in God's purpose for your life. But you keep on chasing the side issues, chasing your crazy kids. And forget about your crazy kids. Get in God's assignment, and God will take care of your crazy kids. Amen? Or your aunt, or your uncle, or your mom or dad. We all got crazies in our family. And if you think that you don't have crazies in your family, take a clue or get a clue. You're the crazy. Amen? But what I'm just trying to say is, you know, we got to get back. God, God, and we got to do that, and we got to praise radical praise. I will praise you at all times, in everything, not for everything, but in everything. I'm gonna praise the Lord. I'm gonna rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice. And that's spiritual warfare because I don't feel like it, but I will feel like it. I'm gonna make my. You cannot feel your way through this. You're gonna have to faith your way through it. We walk by faith and not by sight. And there's changes that take place. Things that take place, things that happen, people come, people go. You know, and, and we even in traveling ministry, you think it's great. But we said, Sharon said, you know, not getting invited back to a church is the equivalent of losing a family as a pastor. I think I'm great. But believe it or not, I don't always get invited back. Everybody says they want a prophet until the prophet does what he does, and then they decide they don't want the prophet. As long as I, as long as I prophesy peace and, pro, peace and prosperity, you like me. But I preach, you know, you need to knock that off and correct that. Not so much. No, no. I want you to be the happy prophet. I am happy. I love you. Come up higher. Right? So we got to remind, and we got to fight that battle. This is what I'm called to do. And here's the question I have for you. I told him, we, we, we were sitting there having a, I told Sharon, man, I am, I am getting onslaughted. I'm about ready to have a meeting. I'm about ready to preach. And all of, a sudden, all of a sudden, my mind starts going, you know, you can do this, you do that, you know, or, you know just attacking me in ministry and, and thinking about the power of God. Uh, about you know the spirit uh, whether the spirit of God was going to show up that night or what was going to happen. I know the spirit of God's always with me, but the enemy was just really you know attacking me before I went to minister. 
And then I just sat there and I had to do spiritual warfare. God's called me. God's anointed me. And let me tell you something, Mr. Devil. You have limited resources. If God wasn't going to show up, why would you waste your time to tell me that God ain't going to show up? He must be about to do something magnificent or you wouldn't have wasted your breath dealing with me. Right? You double team the star basketball player. And I feel like I'm being double teamed right now. Because what that does is that's a compliment from the enemy. I must be a threat because you're working double time on me. Right? So what do you got to do? We got to remind ourselves, what has God told you to do? What's your purpose? Are you on assignment? And recalibrate. Get back in the center of God's will. This is what we do. This is what we do. This is who we are. Amen? And we begin to do that. Okay? And then we do the second, the, after we write it down, the second thing we do is we practice, we practice thanksgiving. You need to deliberately get up every day and thank God on purpose for three things that are going on in your life. Deliberately magnify the good and remember what the Lord has done. Get happy. It will break the sense of entitlement off of your life. That all of a sudden God's not doing, God is doing things. What has he already done? God, I thank you that I'm saved. God, I thank you that I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I thank you that I'm not in jail. I thank you that I'm not on drugs. I thank you that I'm still alive. Or whatever it is. And if you ain't got nothing naturally you can think about, start thanking God for heaven. I have a treasure and I have an inheritance that cannot be touched by what's going on in this earth. And I put my heart and my mind on a heavenly hope instead of an earthly hope. And that heavenly hope will anchor my soul so that I can go through the trial and come out on the other side and be victorious, wanting nothing. <laughs> but you got to do it. And we got to get motivated here. So the Lord is saying there's a, you know, the enemy is trying to go from a positive charge to a negative charge. But you know what? I believe you're smarter than that. And that ain't a rebuke. Oh, my Lord, the enemy's. Who cares what the enemy's doing? You know the plan. Now blow up. Now let's do some defense. Let's praise God. Let's remember what God's called us to do. Let's worship the Lord. Let's not get moved. Let's believe God that for every one family that leaves, 10 are coming in that are better. Preferably with a lot of money. Hallelujah. Come on now. Ain't nothing wrong, God. God, we will reach the poor heathen. But, Lord, we would really like to reach the rich heathen right now. I'm just kidding. We want them all, right? We want them all. But, you know, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on now, people. It's okay. It was a joke. Hallelujah. After, anybody that thinks I'm in the, money, many, uh, the, the ministry for the money, hallelujah. Good luck for that one. Yeah. But anyhow, but what I'm trying to say is, that's what the Lord is saying today, and that's what the Lord is really wanting to connect with you, that this is what the enemy's doing, and it's time to deliberately, intentionally worship God and fight the fight of faith. The fight of faith is not against flesh and blood. The fight of faith is praising God, acknowledging who he is, what he has called you to do, and hallelujah, and, and agreeing with God regardless of what the weather is producing. I'm not going to evaluate whether I go forward or whether I obey God based on favorable weather conditions. You need to write the vision down, amen, and go back and remind you, yourself of it. You need to deliberately practice thanksgiving. We all need to do this. And then you need to deliberately, deliberately take God risk. God risk. I'm talking about, and you have. You have in the past. And 
there's this thing about pulling back and maybe just coasting a little bit. Like that, like I said, you get up and you just you're there. You're not going backwards, but you gotta you gotta put it in a lower gear to get up the, get up the rest of the way uh, up the hill. And a God risk is 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 where you heard from God. You heard from God and God told you to do whatever, and then you go and you do it. Is what it is. Cause this, I believe that the sanctuary is a supernatural church. I believe that this is a starting point. This ain't the finished product. This is a starting point. God is wanting to do so much more. But oftentimes God moves at the pace of our obedience. You know what I'm saying? You know, the Lord told me, hey, I want to do more, but you know what? You need to pick up, you need to stop dragging your feet. My Lord. I'm like, yeah, but Lord, you know, and what is it? Uh, uh, you know, risk. Taking a risk is better anytime than playing it safe. And I'm talking about God. God will honor that kind of faith. And there's sometimes that you just got you just got to stir yourself up, like Paul told Timothy, stir the gift that's up, uh, uh, that's on going on, on the inside of you, fan it to a flame, stir it up. God lit the fire, and, and you'll, you'll see that when God lit the fire in the temples and the tabernacles, when the fire came down from heaven, but the priest had to maintain the fire. God lit the fire. It's of divine origin, but we need to maintain it. We need to, we need to, to stoke it and to stir it up and to not grow complacency. You want to see the devil in the church? We think Ouija boards. We think, you know, Halloween or, or some type of satanic uh, sacrifice or anything evil like that, witchcraft or, or Harry Potter or whatever else you think of when we think of the devil, right? Anton LaVey. You know, whatever. When I say the word demonic, you all got a picture of what the word demonic is. You want to see demonic in the church? Apathy and indifference. Apathy and indifference. It has wiped out more churches and more ministries than anything else. Good enough. Almost. I could see the promised land from this side of the Jordan, but I never went over. Amen? And again, I'm just saying it's time to go. It's time to move forward. It's time to do some spiritual warfare. Hear the voice of God. Remember what God has said. And deliberately say, okay, God, now we got the mega plan. No, I, I, I thought about this, and I saw this, at, you know, during the, during the uh, Crusades. They were talking about how my pastor, I remember I, I was there and, and, and reminded of how he used to minister. And, and you'll hear that in, in the grace camps. Well, I don't need to pray and fast to get anointed. I don't. I don't need to pray and fast and do all that stuff to be anointed. I don't need to do it. But I need to pray and to fast and spend time with God to get specific details to how to minister to this crowd on this day. I'm not praying for gifting and anointing. I'm praying about, God, who's in the, who do you want to talk to today? What's the message you want to say? What is our strategy? And there are divine strategies. Amen? New level, new devil. And we want to go forward in what God has told us to do. And again, uh, disobedience has collateral damage, and obedience has collateral blessing. And I just want to encourage you today. To get in there and praise the Lord. I hope I didn't come off angry. If I did, I'm sorry. I am a little jet lagged. And uh, that's it. I'm not angry at you at all. I love you. That's called the prophet. You know what I'm saying? Just come off a little angry. I'm not angry at all. I believe that you guys are awesome. And if I didn't believe you were awesome, I wouldn't wouldn't say anything. I'd just keep the word to myself, right? And I believe that you're going to obey God. You're going to do what God wants you to do. Your pastors are going to take what I said today and massage it in. Amen. 
and, 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 and direct. I'm not here to set direction or course. I'm just telling you what I believe the Spirit of the Lord is saying. There's a going from a positive charge to a negative charge, and God is saying you're going to have to be aware of it, and you're going to have to power through. You're going to have to power through. You're not going to coast. You're going to have to power through. And uh, if you'll do it, God is just saying that. Turn up the power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So I want to pray over Stephen and Rebecca. I want to talk about a vision that I had during praise and worship. Vision I had was I saw you drawing water from a well with a with a bucket, an old wooden bucket with wood lasts. You know what I'm talking? The wood lasts buckets? Now the wood lath buckets can only contain or draw out as much wire water as the lowest lath. And God says, and then I saw the Lord give you a silver bucket. And the Lord saying, you've been trying to draw water out of the well at the speed of those that have been following you. you the speed of your leadership team. And it has limited you because they are not running at your pace in the name of Jesus. They are not running at your pace, and you've only been able to go. Only You want to, You have a desire to draw out more water, but you can only draw out. At, at, you, know, uh, you know, the strength in this is your weakest link. You can only do it at the height of your, uh, you're trying to elevate them. But God is saying right now, I am changing. I, a paradigm shift is taking place, and I'm giving you a silver bucket. And the silver bucket is even. The silver bucket has been tried in the fire, and there is a component of your anointing, of your of your gift, of the of the, uh, uh, a part of your mantle, hallelujah, that you are not you are not going to be uh, uh, you're not going to be led trying to get people trying to herd cats and get them all to follow you and operate at their pace, but you're going to start setting the pace. I actually see you facing the crowd, walking backwards, and the Lord's saying you're going to turn on the crowd and start going forward and. They're going to follow in the name of Jesus, and they're going to pick up the pace. So the Lord is saying right now, I need you to push into me, and I need you to draw that silver bucket out in the name of Jesus, and the wood bucket will take care of itself in the name of Jesus. So I believe that in the name of Jesus, that God, there's a new component of his gift. There's a new component of their gift right now, and I release it. Allow that silver bucket that's uniformed, uh, a greater capacity. The capacity and the growth of the church has been placed upon the leadership team, but now I'm going to increase the capacity by releasing the fullness of the mantle and the gift and the call that's in your life in the name of Jesus, and we're about ready to pick up the pace in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. We worship you. We worship you. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. I release that on this body. Hallelujah. That we're, you're going to go forward. You're going to do what God's called you to do. You are called to be a mega church. Amen. You need to start thinking mega church. You need to stop thinking small. Stop thinking molehill and start thinking mountain. You are a mountain. You are not a molehill. You are the leaders. Hallelujah. And God is like, we all got to go through this. You know, we got to think bigger. Amen. And stay on assignment. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for my brother right now. In the name of Jesus. I release the power of the Holy Spirit upon him. I hear the Lord, I, I saw I saw you, and I saw cartoon bubbles by your head. And I saw the, 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 the one cloud, and it was just, a, you know, the little circles, which represents in the cartoon thoughts. And I, I saw thoughts of frustration, thoughts of aggravation, and then I saw the thoughts, 
go to another cartoon bottle, which was words, and God is saying the frustration that's in you is starting to manifest in words. And God is saying right now in the name of Jesus, I am going to take care of the frustration in you on the inside and on the outside because I've got a call of God on your life. There's a call of God on your life. There's more for you to do in the name of Jesus. And you've been frustrated because you've been out of place, says the Lord. I'm going to define. I'm going to bring clarity. Hallelujah. And I'm going to bring absolution Hallelujah. And a fulfillment of what I have called you to do. And I'm going to lay out that vision and that plan and that frustration, that frustration in both life and in your walk and in your daily routine is going to go away because the answer is the call of God on your life. So the Lord would say, push into me, my son, for I have a sweet plan for your life that is sweeter than honey that will satisfy your soul. Nothing else will satisfy your soul, says the Lord. So the Lord is saying, you can't go to the right, you can't go to the left, but you need to go full forward, following my voice, full throttle. Follow my voice, trust my voice, says the Lord, and the frustration will go away and dissipate in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. The internal conflict, the external conflict is being resolved right now in the name of Jesus. There is a kingdom purpose on this young man's life, and God is going to define it, and you will not be satisfied by, go, by operating in the world, you are not part of the world. You are born of the kingdom for such a time as is this, says the Lord. And kingdom business is the only thing that's going to satisfy you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, I lay hands on my sister right now, and I pray for her. I see like the valve, uh, uh, the valves in an engine, and I see it's, it, I see engine cleaner going in there and cleaning the valve out, and the valve is clean, and then I see the valve come up, and it's not completely. The valve is not. Com- it, there's a broken piece on the valve, and it, it's it's allowing some of the pressure to come off. If that makes sh- sense, the valve is not. It's it, it's not completely sealing like on an engine. And I hear the Lord say, that valve has to do with your heart. And I'm fixing a valve in your heart right now in the name of Jesus. I'm cleaning it up. I'm cleaning it up. And the admorality, the deformity, I'm making your valve whole and complete. And I'm releasing a creative miracle on you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I release that creative miracle on my sister, and I release a brand new valve. I release a brand new creative miracle to make that heart, all that pressure, to, to function the way it's supposed to function, and to cause her heart, thats ah, there it is, that's the word I'm trying to use, to cause your heart to operate at full power in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you for it. Lord, I thank you for it. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I worship you, and I thank you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we worship you. We praise you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right here, my sister, here. By the way, congratulations on your ordination. Yeah, hallelujah. Good. So, I just hear the Lord say, I see a, 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 I see a chair that you're sitting on. And I see every time you try to get up the chair, the chair is covered in tar. And every time you try to get up, uh, the, the enemy tells you to set back down. Every time you try to stand up, the enemy says, set back down in the name of Jesus. Every time you try to get up, the enemy sets you back down in the name of Jesus. And you are just waiting on God to divinely do something, waiting on God to divinely 
uh, pick you up out of the sea in the name of Jesus. But the Lord is saying right now, I'm coating you in my love. I'm coating you in Holy Ghost oil, and the tar is no longer going to stick to you, and I need you to stand back up. And when you stand back up this time, you're not going to be pulled back down into the sea. You're going to stand, and you're going to move forward for the first time time in your life you're going to get freed from that chair and from that bondage in the name of jesus i'm going to put real authority on you i'm going to put real responsibility on you but i'm going to free you from the tar that keeps you glued to the chair and keeps you immobilized in the name of jesus you're able to talk you're able to see you're able to participate people can hear you but you cannot move off of that chair and the Lord has said I'm going to move you I'm going to do a work on the inside of you there are things that are going to happen immediately and there are things that are going to happen over time but there will be a difference this day going forward in the name of Jesus I release the power of the Holy Spirit to do a work right now in Jesus' mighty name she's been stuck like Chuck stuck you're getting unstuck Worse than bubble gum on the bottom of your shoe. Hallelujah. Trying to stand up. Trying to stand up. Kind of like my kid, my third kid, my third son. It was a miracle he ever learned how to walk because the other two kept on tripping him. You know what I'm saying? That's what I see. You're like my third son. You're trying to walk, and every time you try to walk, you get tripped up. It'd be a miracle. You, you pulled yourself up, but you're having trouble walking. And the things that are tripping you up, they're going to take care of themselves in the name of Jesus, both external and internal. God is taking care of external, and he's taking care of internal. There's a change that's going to take a place in your heart in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I see the pressure in a shower head. You're not getting the full pressure. And it's like, you know how it gets all built up with the the and it needs to be clean new pipes? God said, oh, no, 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 hallelujah. You have not felt the full pressure of my love yet. You've had a trinkle, but I'm about ready to unclog the pipes, and you're about ready to fill, my, and my love is going to set you free like it's never set you free before. You're about ready. The things that are in your heart and the things that are from your past that are stopping you from receiving and perceiving the full extent of my love, I'm getting that junk out of the way right now, and you're about ready to experience my love like you have never had before, and it's going to free you through at your very soul and in your very core in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you get right. I'm, I'm not surprised if within the next two or three days you have a God encounter in the name of Jesus, and it's going to mess you up. Hallelujah. I would not be surprised at all. Come on now. You're going to get a dose of the ghost. You know, sometimes we need good Bible teaching. Amen. Sometimes there's things that Bible teaching can't do. I just need to be in the presence. And I'm not saying, I'm not trying to, it's not either or. Why not both? Amen. Sometimes I need to be ran over with a Holy Ghost back truck. You know, instantaneously free in the name of Jesus.